Hi there, this game is called Shakespeare. It's by Yastari Games or Utari Games. And it's a game basically about um, trying to get the best theatre for the Queen, who's due to arrive in one week. There's going to be a number of acts and you're looking to dress the best actors. You're trying to get the Queen's support. You're trying to, um, yeah, get people to think your troops are the best there are. Tropes is in T-R-O-U-P-E-S. Um, the game box is well laid out. There's lots of bits in here. Uh, basically, it's a chance of a lifetime for the young authors who are inflaming the populace with ever more audacious and motley plays. Um, but just how creative a masterpiece can you make in such, such a short period in time? Well, whoever has the answer uh, to this obviously thorny question will probably be the uh, entering into the roles of history. So I'm going to put away everything that isn't needed for a solo play. What we're going to do is show you how to play this as if it's multiplayer and then also there's going to be a chance to sort of see how it works a little bit solo which i might then do as a separate video but just to give you an inclination so let me chuck around all the pieces that aren't needed actually red is quite a good color to compare with blue that i was going to play with so we have orange we have green we have blue we have red so this game's been out a few years now um, I'm not sure if it's out of print. I know Asmodee were doing a uh, print run on it. And you're looking to earn the most prestige. Most prestige is to victory points. The most victory points wins the game. So you're going to have a player board each. Again, in a solo play, you won't need any but your own. And what you're going to do is have this visible. This is basically to do with the turn order, the tracks, which we can leave up above the board. And then this can go down here representing you. So that should be in shot slightly. And you're gonna have your counters. So counters will be representing the opposition. So this is who I am. These are my counters. I've already got it set up. And then um, red is gonna be opponent. And all we need to do for red is you take some counters here and place them on here in a solo game as an example. The additional thing to do is be aware of where the um, your opponent is so in a multiplayer game you're going to see how they're getting on and it's snakes like that to see the best score the rule book's very good it does tell you about what kind of score is good in say a two to four player game it lists illustrates various kinds of characters and who they are and additionally to that you can actually see information on what strategies you might want to do and a variant as well plus a solo play and ensure the game is basically you know suitable um, for various types of players so let me just chuck um, the single coin back in the bag, which I couldn't find in a minute. We're going to have various things we've been drawn for a bag as well, and we have various character cards. So these are people that we can hire to sort of help us with our play. So each person can hold on to one of these or have a look to show you how you set it up. But in a solo play, it's set up like this. So um, in fact, a solo play is like this, but I'm pretty sure it's identical. Yeah, it's the same thing. So can leave that visible. This can all go back apart from the cards that we're going to need. We don't need these because we're playing it um, multiplayer. And these are some objective cards you could go towards. Additionally, we have um, some additional cards here. These are basically people that we could hire. So for example, we have Lady Macbeth, we could hire her. So I'm going to pop these back. And the only other thing to be aware of is you have some money and that's about it. So in a two player game, as an example, so we can take these out of the way for a second. We're going to set it up. Like I say, these are the same. You're going to have certain things you're going to need to lay out. So you're going to have all these coins out here. It's basically saying distribution of what you're going to need. This is basically their clothing. It's what's representing on what they'll be wearing. So in a two or a solo game, you're gonna need two of those ones, some of them. So I've got five, six, seven, eight. And because I'll be setting this up, I'll do the solo play straight afterwards, and I'll be doing the uh, weighing in at the end of the solo play video. So I can go away. We're gonna need two twos, three, four, five, six, three, six, seven, eight. You're gonna need seven threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're gonna need five fours. So one, 
two, three, four, five. I personally think it's best bagged individually. You're going to need um, four fives. One, two, three, four. And finally, you're going to need four threes. And you should have, I think, 32 pieces. So that's 16, 23, 28, uh, 32, 36. So we double check. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, six. 26, 27, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Perfect. So now these can all go away. You do not need them at all for the rest of the game. That was just for setup. So it only takes a minute or two just to get that arranged. But depending on the number of players, you're going to use more of these, which will indicate basically how fancy the dresses could be potentially. And then you're going to need the same thing going on with these kind of tiles. So over here, we're going to need one, two. It's the same kind of distribution. Uh, just different kind of things on them. So uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, eight, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, seven of the threes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five fours, one, two, three, four, five. Four fives. So what this is is to do with how well the set looks. That's what this relates to. One, two, three, four. Cool. So that goes away, and the rest we can just chuck, uh, chuck back in the box. So I'm just double check we've got the fours. So let me just go around here and put them back in the box. Okay. So they can just go. In there, and these can go out too. Money, that's another thing that we can come on to. But the time being, you're going to set up your counters. So you're going to have a counter on the first acts of each of these plays. So acts one, two, and three. Prestige, so this is something to see who starts. And then you can also have these other counters which you're going to use on your specific. Um, round markers. So I might have to put this wrong way around. Uh, five. Oh, this is the other colour. So this is the opponent's colour. So we won't need to use them and go away. But for this one, I'm representing blue. So we just need those there. And I think we can have that to mark what their score might be at the end. This can go away. Again, you could bag things individually. This is Queen Elizabeth. We can go to her and ask for more objectives, more things to work towards. I think this is full staff from the Merry Wives of Windsor. We can go to him and uh, he can incre increase our enjoyment, which makes a lot of sense because thematically, you know, he's a, I think it's the funniest play there is. It's the one I've seen at the Globe Theatre. So now you're going to take the character to marker things as well. So they're going to start on four. That can go away as well. We're going to start on one. So these various acts are tracks that we can go up. And the advantage of going up these tracks is as follows. If you're on the red marker track, it means that you're able to get money. Money is needed to pay off some of your actors at the end if you hire any more. If you don't, you're going to get negative points. If you reach here, you're going to get three. Here, you're going to get five. And we're going to be getting some money at the dress rehearsal and the final dress rehearsal. So that's because we get to have it for play. We get some people in and we might get some money from it. This one is basically around prestige, and it's saying if you're higher up than anyone else, so the most player game, whoever's in the first position or first furthest on, then they will also gain two prestige. Two prestige is victory points, and most victory points at the end wins. The final thing is the blue track. Now, in this case, everybody could get them. They get one prestige reaching here, two prestige reaching here, and three prestige work reaching the end. We don't really need these cards anymore, but it's worth us being indicating what's on these cards. So this one, nothing really happens. This one, you gain a coin, so a single one. This one, you'll lose some prosperity, which I'll get onto, uh, or stuff that can happen. Uh, here is basically a thread needle. It allows three extra um, modifications to things you could buy, which I'll come on to. And finally, this one, you can basically place a tile anywhere, which is to do your theatre, which I'll get onto. So let me put these cards away. 
we don't need them anymore. So uh, the final thing is just to set up the other pieces. So here are the rest of these pieces in play and they're rolling all over the place. So starting off here, you've got five little markers. Uh, this is on turn order to see who starts where. This is to do with prestige. This is gonna be your five bidding cubes. It's a key part of the game. You're gonna be starting on one down here. And yes, you need one here. So this is basically happiness. How much are people enjoying your play? If they're enjoying that, your play a little bit at the end of uh, a round, say, you'll get one money. If you happen to be up here, you're more creative, you're, I don't know, um, prepared to push the boat a bit, then you'll gain an extra addition to one of your acts. And if you go up here, you'll gain a prestige, so you're doing very well. The alternative is you'll lose um, part of your act, and also you'll end up losing prestige. So you don't want to be down there. I'm just going to chuck these in the bag. The idea of this bag is to show that each round you could be drawing different things. So um, each round some things will be drawn and uh, you never know what's going to come out. We don't know what kind of clothing we might be bidding on or trying to accumulate. These kind of go in as well. All right, in they go. So the first thing to do is we need to grab some things out, which I'll do in a moment. Um, I need to move the rule book out of the way. There's a player aid here for if you happen to be going for uh, certain actors, it tells you what they do, and also objectives, things that you can work towards. So uh, we have objectives. This is if you happen to go here. If you happen to, well, we can go through it as an example. If you happen to have this card, so you draw three and pick one, so doing this early on might be of interest, and um, you score one prestige if they discard two pounds, if the player scores two prestige if they score five pounds. So at the end of the game, money can be tight, you need to pay people off, but if you can do that as well, extra prestige. You have to fill your theatre, you get 26 points or 40, depending on how many points you can get in here. And various other cards you can discard or fire one of your actors, you don't have to pay them. If you're furthest across in each of those, you'll score a prestige for each. And um, so I did that one before and such like. So different things you could work towards. So that could kind of, to be honest, sit here, but everyone has a different board. So in a multiplayer game, that's fine. That can just get out of the way for the time being. So um, aside from that, um, I'll let you tell you what's on the core boards. So I mentioned you can go here and this lets you increase your acts one or two of things um, of your choice. You could do this one twice. You could do one of each, so you could do one and one using this one here. And you can also um, clothe him. So if you clothe this person, you're able to actually score um, an extra red feather as well. So made him more creative. So we need to lay out the board and I'll do that now. So what we're gonna do is in a solo game, you're drawing out three elements in a two player game six, three player game nine, and in a four player game 12. So these are gonna go on the location, which is gonna be on here. So this basically tells you how many things you're gonna need. So draw one, two, three. Each round we're drawing three things. There's seven uh, clothing points available. And I'll explain how that works in a second. Now we'll draw out three of these, one, two, three. So if I happen to get these things, what I could do is complete their costume. This represents their costume. So if I happen to do that, that's worth seven. Seven um, is a, a score. It gives me some kind of benefit. And it's saying, yes, um, we quite like their clothing. We want to come and see you. We're prepared to give you some money. So we'll give you one money, one pound, because you've gone six to seven. Okay. Now, if you happen to have gone over here and managed to make it a bit more of a fancy costume, you get some money and you get prestige because they're quite impressed. They really want to come and see you. Having said that, if it's very fancy, like it's silk or whatever you want to define this as being, you're going to get two prestige. They're going, oh, wow, yeah, it's one of the best um, costumes I've ever seen. We really want to come and see that. You'll gain some glory, but of course, that silk was expensive, so thematically, uh, you haven't really made any money from it. And finally, you can get three prestige. It's the best costume outfits in London, 
but yeah, you had to buy all those kind of fancy imported goods. So you didn't make any money from it, but at least you're gaining victory points, which again, end of the game could be good. So to get a score of like 13 to 15, you see those fives gets drawn. You need a five, five, and say another five or a four or a three to do well. So in this instance, maybe waiting and slowly each round getting stuff and going for, you know, the most efficient thing like a six or an eight or 11 or a 13 could be better. Also at the end of act four, we'll score this. If this was a completed costume, they get to go on display in the act, in the um, dress rehearsal, and you'll score an additional yellow feather. So you'll score additional points there. Now, how do you do something like that? You take your one of your marker things and you plonk it on here. It allows you to draw up to the value of four of either dress material or, um, I guess, dress material for the uh, for the stage. So again, same thing in supplies. If you've got very fancy looking set design, you're going to do better there. The downside with this is suddenly, well, I could get three and a one, I get two and a two, you can't get a five at the minute. So if you wish to build on your set, the way you do is it must be symmetrical. So I put a two here, I must put a two here, or a three here, three here, five and five. I could start doing like a three here, and I can start going up if I want to, however I wish, but I can't then stick anything here or anything here unless it's the same. So you could start branching up and getting these. So if you get to cover these over, you're going to score a prestige, so a victory point. But um, as one of those objective shows, you need to try and get 26 points. I mean, there is 10 already, but with four, it's going to be slow burn. And then you're struggling to then make sure you can get a four out because something like a five is around. So that's the kind of basic things you can do. But each round, you have a chance to lure in one of the actors. So this is where we take this deck. So these are cards that we can have in play. And then you shuffle them. And you lay out four things. So what I'm going to do now is just draw this up to the edge and just lay out four down here initially. So you flip them over. Ah, so we have the jeweler, which early on is quite interesting because of he can buy the gold kind of stuff. Otherwise, you can't normally get them. So what can we do here? Well. It's an actual action. We've talked about these actions. Now you could place a feather. So basically you're gonna have different markers, which I'll explain how you use different action points in a minute. And at the end of the game, you need to pay him one, but if you completely dress in, you're gonna get two money as well. So an interesting kind of compromise, but you get to be moving up these tracks. This one is the same as this guy. So it lets you take more stuff. And finally over here, basically it's a similar thing. You can take a blue cube, a blue tile here, but there isn't one in this round and you also get a feather marker, but it's expensive. You need to pay five and you'll get a blue and a yellow if you can clothe him. So how do you decide who goes first and stuff like that? You have five markers. You could potentially have five turns on your go to do something like that, activating that, 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 etc. But firstly, you're trying to bid. So you see these cards, you think, who do I fancy, if anyone? And then compared to your opponents, you're then going to grab amount that you want to bid, reveal, and initially you're going to decide who starts. And if I bid three and they bid four, then they'll get to, um, they'll go second because the lowest bid starts, but they'll have more actions this turn. Also, if I bid it lower, I get to go first on the next round. And finally, I get a prestige point. So I get to go off zero on onto one because I bidded first. In a solo game, if you bid two or one, you get to um, always get one prestige and more than that, you're not getting anything. So it's encouraging you to not take too many actions, but actions are very good. Now, if I happen to bid a five, um, I bid for one of these guys. So basically I plonk down a card. So let's say I grabbed, hmm, interesting, it's a single one, not a double. The jeweler could be of use just to get that three. Yeah, I know somebody wanted the jeweler before, so I'll try getting the jeweler early on. So getting him and he just goes off to the side. He's a person, he's not a costumer. He goes, as an example, there. In fact, I think only uh, actors go on this side because they are um, got names on them. So yeah, we had full stuff. So he's going this side because he's, help he's a helper. He's not an actor. So I've got my five things. So in a solo game, it doesn't matter where I do them in any order, but in another type of game, um, I go, then they go and vice versa. Um, or you place them all out, but the strategic one is you place individually. 
so um, you uh, you can see what they're doing. So if I happen to go first and trigger an actor, I get a prestige for going first, and actually that is actually how you um, go first in the turn order, not to do with um, bidding lower. That's just giving you a prestige. So I go, what do I want to do first? There's nothing too negative. There's nothing out here that's going to give me negative stuff. But I still like the idea of getting something at the end. They take their turn. He isn't useful for me this round, but later on he might be. This isn't very useful. I think I wouldn't mind getting a two and a two and a three and a one. Um, I might not even go for anything down here. I wouldn't mind getting some feathers up. And I might go for one of these. So I have used five actions. So I resolve them, done him. So I'll show you what I do in a minute. I got two on the tracks. If in act four or act six, so the dress rehearsals, I'm in this these zones, I'll lose a prestige. So I'm gonna choose to up this one because at least it gives me something early game. Um, I'm gonna go here and grab, I think, the two and the two, because it gives me a coin. So I just take that and stick it, I think there, and take the two and stick it on here. So that's that one. So done one, two, I'm gonna take a card in a moment. Uh, one, two, three, four, and I'm not placing my last one out. So I'm actually only playing four. Um, I don't get prestige because I'm playing it solo as an example. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna grab one of these at random and picking three. One, two, three. So uh, let's have a look. This basically, if I don't want to take one of these cards, so I haven't take him, I could take a card instead of him, as an example. You flip it over and it just lets you um, get a feather, so an act of progression by, again, just fulfilling it up. And um, you don't have to pay any costs. So I've taken these three cards. So we're just going to go through them. You're going to tell me what they are. So we have uh, this one on the left. If this player's character card has a total value of at least £13, pounds, um, the player scores one prestige point. If the character has a at least 18, they score two prestige. So that is um, the costs at the top there. Uh, finally, if you have over here, um, okay, that's like putting stuff on them. Okay, uh, we also have this one over here, which is sort of similar. If you've created any three actors, not including those on the individual board, you score one pound. If you have recruited four, you score two. And finally, as I mentioned on the right hand side, if you've two extras, I'm going to take this one. So I'll leave it there as something to hopefully work towards. Chuck those away. And that is the end of Act One. So uh, now we continue on and we do Act Two. So there's no bidding in Round One. Round One is bidding only in the multiplayer game. I'm just wagering how much I want to do. So now we move on to uh, the next, uh, next phase. I'll just tell you about. Um, how uh, about Shakespeare? So he has acted in his own plays as well, which is why we do sort of see him here. And uh, just met bearing that in mind. So now what I do is I now do sort of clean up. So if I have used an actor this turn, I'm going to have to chuck out one of these markers to show that they're having to rest the next day. And that's just to show, you know, how reality works. Now, the thing is, when we rest, you're going to have to be aware. So I think we have everything pretty much in shot now is just these things need to be placed out, is I need to be aware that I need to rest all but one of my people. So these cards go away. They're no longer needed in the game. Just chuck them out. So we're gonna do more ones in a second. This comes back. And now I'm going to be uh, relay, relaying this in a second, but I'm gonna see who I want to rest. So I don't know what's gonna be replenished here. This goes out of the game as well, as does that. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know if I need a card again. I could take money instead. I wouldn't mind going up the track again. I wouldn't mind using him again. So I think I'm gonna use, ah, and I gained a feather. So I gained um, one thing of my choice. I think I do this. So I go up here. So now I'm gonna consider going for uh, blocking her off. I don't need to go there. I'm going to keep that one, I think because I want to work on this track. I'm going to block off these two as well. So now I can't use those abilities. And it also encourages me maybe to get a different actor. So some things I can't use this turn. I've got him, I've got one, 
two, and maybe some more things. So now we place out the new cards again. We have out one of Othello. We've got the carpenter kind of uh, guy, the carpet with the guy who basically works on um, set design and stuff like that. Um, he's the tailor. He can give us an extra three boosts to this. It's up to seven. So it's a one-off thing, paying one coin. And this one is you can take eight, eight from the uh, dress, um, from dressing the set. So this time round, I'm thinking of probably going for Tricky. I think this one, take him. So take him, my car goes there, someone else then goes. This time he's going on this side. So it doesn't help me with this a bit, this bonus. Now we're gonna draw again. So these cards go again. And now we're going to be um, chucking out three more things. So as the solo play, I think we kind of ended up playing it now. So I've got three things here. Anything that isn't used is a negative. So we haven't got any negatives again this round, which is good. Three things here again. One, two, three. It doesn't look too good, but that four could be quite juicy. So I'm thinking I'm going to go here. I could have bidded how many I wanted to do, but I'm thinking I'm going to use at least two at the very least. So that's going to go there. I get my plus three, which is really annoying, but I don't have to use it this round. It's not a plus three. It's my needle and thread. So I'm going to probably do this one, take a four and chuck it uh, on here again. Try and fill him up for the, after the fourth day. Um, who else have I got left to use? Him. So he's just given me this. Uh, so I didn't even get to use him. So in fact, I've used one. And that's about it, really. None of these came up. So I'm just going to consider something else. Maybe let's take a single action and get them all back which would give me one prestige. So then I get one prestige and uh, let's see what else. So um, what happened down here was I would have actually got a coin as well. So I give myself a money. And finally, when um, after, uh, basically once I'm dress rehearsal, these were gonna move up to position eight, so five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna compare myself against this one each time. The other thing is in a solo game, you draw um, a total of six things out. So I might've changed what I did in that last round because I could have drawn those things, which wouldn't have affected anything because I only had the four. Um, so they would have gone. Um, so I didn't have them. And I would have had another three things here, which I think I wouldn't have used either. One, two, three. So I wouldn't have picked those. So I had a pound earlier, didn't I? Which I can't seem to find, but I gained that for using up that two disc. So this resets back to there as well. Um, so that would have been uh, at two. I would have still been able to have drawn another three more things for this round, because that was the last round. Some more money and stuff there. And there'd still be another three more options to pick from one, two, three, one, two, three. So I do have my three, which would give me seven, which is fine, get some done. I'm just wondering if I want to do something different. Um, I can draw an extra three things. Yeah, I think I'll use them up. So I've used up my um, handyman, take three to stick him, I stick him there and I hope to get just a single one. Uh, because I used them up. So that's gone. And that pretty much uses it up. So that is the end of Act 2, as you see, very swift. So um, I had one point for here. Uh, it was a feather, wasn't it? So I had one for this round of going up by one position. That's the end of Round 2. So then you take everything off again. So those go. So it does say it's a 20-minute game to 90 minutes. It's solo, as you can see, it is the swift. Um, this all comes off because they've rested. This guy hasn't rested, he's been used. Uh, this guy comes off too. Uh, I'm gonna lay out four more cards again. So these are gonna be moved, chucked down here. So we have one, two, so you must take a card. Three, four, I get to pick. Um, what I want to think about though is, uh, 
So when you place out these cards, you do that at the end of a round, not the beginning of a new round. So you can actually wage and see what you fancy having. The same with these, you could have actually thought, so these actually go out now, so another six go out. And that of these that you have in play depends on the number of players, you will actually have more. So in, say, a three-player game, you'd have uh, five, six, and a <coughs> four-player game. So they go there. They go back in the bag. And as you can see, I'm not really focusing on that set at all, um, which I've never done in any of the games. Five, six, and then solo, it seems to make a lot of sense. So these go back in the bag. I can see who I fancy. I do have a green one in play. So that's going to be on to 11, which I definitely fancy. So grab her. So we're going to grab uh, Beatrice. I couldn't have activated anyone because um, it's an actor. So I go there. And I'll discard the others. But then eight would be quite nice as well. Because actually that is the same as this. So advantage of doing this in uh, multiplayer games, I can grab that first. They're all going to disappear as well. For an eight, I could then grab a three here or I could jab an eight. So eight, 11, I think that's even better. It's gonna cost me five, that also cost me five. And then it gives me that thimble. I'm, it's a tricky one, same cost. Uh, and I get a feather as well. I think I go for this one, let's risk it. So these go away. So I'm gonna grab her, stick her here. And it's another advantage because if, yeah, she's on the right hand side, so I get the other benefit too. So now I'm going to start. I'm going to grab um, this, which costs me nothing, stick her here, which I'll score at the end of the round. I'm then going to be, so in round three, so the marker to show in round three. Um, so she's been placed out, uh, moved it up. I'm going to activate this twice, um, activate him, might as well and go up again, one, two, and he's gonna go up again anyway, but I've got quite expensive people now. I can't use him, could get some money. I think maybe money's a good idea, or try and draw a different card. Maybe I'll go for a card again. Um, I do need another actor though, I've only got one at the minute. Um, I'll get a thimble, and I'm also going to, the jeweler can give me three, which I don't need either. So I'm not using him at all, which is annoying. Uh, yeah, because there's no things out. So I'm only using three things. Well, I could have used two and gained a prestige. I'm going to use two to so go back to gain a prestige. And then uh, I've grabbed that already and I move forward one. So that's end of round three. Uh, these will come back again. I'm going to use her as well. So grab three cards. That's a nice one to go for, furthest ahead. And this one is, and uh, double checking, if the player has four complete costumes, three elements on uh, different characters, so they score on prestige. I don't want to do this one, I want to go for this one. So I've got another objective to go towards, which is being the furthest from all the tracks. So discard those cards, and very unlikely to go for any more of those cards. So now we cover over the bits. So she's now used up, as is her. So one, two, do the clean up. So chuck out some more cards. For round four, where we have the dress rehearsal, I need to get a move on to move up this track. Four things go out and we're moving into round four. These go off, those go off. Do we have any negatives? Yes, we did. There are two negatives, oh dear. So um, I would have gone down one, two and lost a prestige. So I could have gained a prestige to lose a prestige. So it wasn't really worth it. So yeah, I've gone backwards one. Now we're drawing out some more stuff. So if I had two of these out, you'd have gone down two prestiges. I only went down one prestige. So yeah, I would have just lost a feather. So I've gone backwards on here one. I'm guessing it'll have to be one I'm already on. Round four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll go through all of these tokens. That's there. This is where the jewel is gonna be good. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
who do I fancy now? I don't want to do that. That's stupid. Um, be gaining prestige. I want someone cheap. Her. Oh, it's Romeo. So yeah, all um, females are played as males, young males who voices hadn't broken. So that's resets. Um, I'm going to be deciding what I'm going on now. So based on what's come up, I'm going to be scoring. So I want to get someone on here. So I think I need to do that probably and that. Um, I don't know if I used that last round. I should have done. Um, I could say I hadn't. So then that was there. And then, so he's back in play again this round. Um, and then let me think about it. I'm going to place out no negatives, but I could get a feather. I think I'm going to go for it hard. Two. I can't remember if it was there before. I think it was. No. Uh, increase yellow. Yeah. And then the jeweler. So, where do we begin? The jeweler can give me one of them. We'll take this one. Nine, a bit middling ground. I think this looks more promising. So, three to do him. Done. Um, get four out, which is a two and a two. Let's do that, which is seven, which is a bit annoying. And it's, yeah, a shame. And we've got the tinker using it for three gives us nine, so that could be better if I did that. Makes any difference? No. Well, it does help this one. So, um, end of the round. Okay, anyone else to use? One, two, three, it should, has he moved up? He hasn't moved up yet. Um, feather moves up two, let's go one, two. Um, and then we couldn't use her two, so I get two positioning. It's got to go symmetrical, so I'm going to go here, and I don't get any bonus. Could use a one and a one instead, which may be a better idea. Let's use a one and a one. That's symmetrical, isn't it? There we go. And finally, we have. Uh, the yellow feather goes up one. Cool. So we're going to gain a feather. So we're going to go up one there. That can. Uh, then we're going to do this yellow feather moves up again one. Red feather completes, goes up again. That completes. We get that, and we get a blue. That's empty, and I think that's that on the board. Additionally, though, I'm further ahead, so I get a three, and we believe it's a one as well. So I get a three and a one. This all comes off. And now we're going to score compared to where the neutral player is. So that goes out. This comes off. Now it's time to compare. Okay, so I managed to get that money there. Because they were already there, I don't manage to get the benefits. So I don't actually only gain one prestige, not two, because they were here first. And uh, that covers this off. And what I should have done is taken this, which does give you one prestige at the end of the game, um, because it was a free action, basically. Do it. I don't know, I wouldn't have done it, because you have to play something on there. Um, so that all comes off. That's the end of the fourth round. So I need to now place out people. I'm going to keep, well, she doesn't, she's no longer blocked, which is good. I'm going to be getting rid of these cards. I'm going to be thinking who I want to block off. Um, I did I even use him as well. I'm not sure I did. I assume I did. So he stays there. I'm going to I could probably work out who's blocked and who isn't blocked based on what cards have been played. Um, so there's four of these yellows in play and they're worth extra points at the end. So I don't want to block him off. It's a penultimate round. Um, but I don't know if I need it, so there's a bit of risk. I'm going to block off him and keep going on the... No, I'm going to keep him, block off Shakespeare. And hopefully Fullstaff will help me. 
So block off him, her, and I think that's it. Okay. I think there's only two out of that round, wasn't there? In which case, only be one, so one gets to rest. There we go, let's do that. That might be right, I missed something off. So another six to be drawn. So there'll be six left in the bag. Two, three, four, five, six. Again, if I'm any mistakes, pop them in the comments, but apologies for that. Uh, lots to consider. This is why I don't play solo games too much. Three, four, five, six. So they've gone out. And I need to consider where I want to go. So I am thinking of going for him. I need to get out some more characters. So one, more jewelers. Two, got to take somebody. And I need more actors as well, which there aren't any. So I'm not going to take anyone. I'm just going to take a wild. There's nobody there I want. That goes away. And I need to be ahead on these tracks. So I'm already okay with this one. I'm looking okay. Blue, I need to increase. Um, the jeweler, using him up to grab the three. I'm going to use up um, this with this ability to take a four and a three. So that gives me 10, which isn't ideal, but it's done now. Um, there's one negative there, but there's also going to be some positives. So let's grab him to go up two. And there's nothing useful here. Grab a coin and go up on the yellow track. So that can go here and grab a coin. So now I can start seeing who I've paid as we're in round five. So I didn't get any prestige or anything like that. So I've basically paid off him, I've paid off the jeweler, I've paid off her. I've still got to pay off this person. So I'm a bit shy at the minute. So that's end of round five. Um, now it's time to see uh, what could happen. Um, when I happen to complete this, I don't think I did this as well. Because we managed to complete her, which is eight, which is another money and another victory point. And when I did this one, that is also eight, which is another money and another victory point. And then this is 10, which is another money and another victory point. So that's a penultimate and final round. So we're gonna chuck on, I don't wanna want her anymore. I don't think I want, he goes up one for prestige, block him off, keep him back. I think I'm needing for the last round. And we're going to block off these two, which is going to be tricky. So one goes there and one goes there. So final round, what can we get out? We're going to get out the final four cards. One, two, three, four. I really need an actor of which there's one and it's Juliet. So if I can get out a fourth actor, I've only got two. I need this person. So I'm going to take that person. Gonna cost me one though, and now it's done. Chucking out the last uh, sets of things. So we've got six remaining. So we're gonna lose some prestige. I may have actually had something else I need to remove from here. Um, let's could lose some prestige. The final six from the bag. I'll tell you how um, I review on this afterwards. So, I can't do it anyway. Um, right, then take everyone off. So, take that off. I've got loads of actions, I might as well go for it. Let's do him first, two. Um, red and that, so let's go this. I need a two. Can't complete it though. I've got the tailor. So I could get the tailor to use a one, a, a two and a one, but then I haven't, she's only a two. Let's use a two anyway. A two there, tailor's a three, big shame. And that's that done. Um, so she's used, he's used, there's no greens in play, unfortunately. 
feather though, so at least it's a feather. Uh, these should have been eight position as well now. Um, so she's going to move me up one and one. She is going to move me up one anyway. So she moves me up one. I think that's right. Uh, yellow is going to move up. He's still behind. Red's moving up. Blue moves up. Uh, go there. This, I don't lose prestige. And take some coins because I need to pay off people. So she's going to go there. Almost can afford her. Otherwise lose two prestige. But I think I take just four money. So take five minus five pounds or minus one. And I've got some money left over, which isn't worth anything. Cool. So that's that done. Um, then time to score up. So we're going to score. I'm going to get, I didn't reach that bit. Oh, no, here we go. So I get to a red goes up. A red and a blue, so I've wasted it. That's a trouble. Another red doesn't happen. A yellow goes up. Yellow goes up, um, I get a feather, so they're all in the lead, so it doesn't help me, but I get a prestige if I go this way. Um, and now I do final scoring, so let's look here. I'm not in the lead, not in the lead, um, I'm in the lead for one of them, so I get one prestige. I'll get five money, so after all that, I didn't need the money, I should have taken uh, one of these cards. I could pretend I took one of these cards just to see what happened. Um, two money, gain a thing, five money, to firing somebody, but firing someone's a bit too late, so we wouldn't have done that. Let's say we didn't do that. We would have gone for getting some money out. Um, we've then also got this, so I get one prestige here. I get one prestige here. Um, I do have three actors, so I get another prestige. Can I pay them? Yes. So that's one, two... I've got some money down here. Yep, yep, yep. And do I have enough money? I get another two prestige. So that's one, two. Um, I gain a feather down the bottom, which doesn't help me. But I can go there if I haven't done that already. Um, and yeah, there wasn't enough here to score anything. So that's pretty much the game. And it's much better, I think, you know, now I'm doing a review on this, I think with more players, I think it's... Um, it's great to know what people are working on and how you can screw somebody over. I think it works well as a as a two, and and it's effective. I think it's you know I've played it with other player accounts as well, and I don't mind multiplayer games, but there's a lot of stuff you do need to keep track on. And I think I did blip a couple of times at least. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting game, and hopefully this is giving you a bit of an insight as to what you're doing. Uh, the person who I'm borrowing this game from, he's not a fan of actually being involved in like playthroughs. He is in one, he's in the Western Legends playthrough, but uh, he's not uh, you know, the kind of person who really wants to be on screen. And for that reason, um, the chance of actually having this played, potentially, uh, at least with him at the very least, is unlikely. But as he knows the game, it's whether or not this would be then a complete run through of somebody else or a way in which you then, you know, show people how to do it. So that was my final score. It was, I think, mid-teens. Wasn't particularly good. Um, a kind of leading score is high twenties, I think. If you're looking to play like two players, I said, or towards that, you know, high twenties as a as a solo game. But these bags are all empty, so it's easy to put away. And uh, yeah, piece is very nice. And um, I think I give this game kind of a seven out of ten. It's quite an interesting um, prospect. Going for this thing, I've never found very interesting, and I've always gone for um, these acts. I think acts are where you're going to get your points bidding and knowing when you want to go and the less you choose to then have your action points you know the better that is in the sense that you're going to gain prestige you can get you know aid yourself on turn order potentially and also um you could also start thinking well they that person can only really go to two spaces because they're resting so much do they need both those spaces are they just going to pick one of them and then you can see what's come up and thinking oh yeah they're just after something that you're after the same with those characters um, quite an interesting variety, and I like the theme of uh, you get to know who they are and kind of what they represent. So that's really cool. Um, interesting information on the back of the book, and um, it's quite a clear layout. The game is about 90 minutes um, with two to four players, but as you can see, it can be pretty swift solo, as many solo games are. Um, very interesting artwork if you've played 
or aware of um, Sherlock Holmes, sort of the detective uh, storybook, then uh, this is by the same people. And I can tell the art's work has been um, quite a lot of dedication to this. I think um, the French created this, uh, some French people put this game together and came up with the idea. And no, it's, it's a clever concept. I do like the idea of um, building this all up and sets and dresses and actors and stuff like that. It's very interesting um, where it's been put together. Resting, I've seen in other games too. Games such as another quite an old thing, which is in fact a Sherlock, and uh, I've yet to actually recorded my thing for that. And that is, I think, called Sherlock and Mycroft, which there's a promo out now for. So, yeah, it's uh, a game that I think would be worth discovering. It's a game that's, um, like I guess, they've been out for a few years, and it's something that's uh, maybe not been on your radar. So, yeah, I think you'd be quite curious to see this. Um, but aside from that, it's, you know, again, concepts which you may not be familiar with, and blending that all together has been quite a fun experience. In terms of the bags and all the spaces, as you can see, there's loads of them. Um, it doesn't need all the space. As for leaving all these pieces in here, even though you could have extra baggies, which is my preference, um, like I said, I'm not the owner. He tends to just chuck them all in, sort of back in the same bag. So that regardless of player count, you're, um, you're familiar with what's in there. Of course, you can look into distribution and you're still pushing your luck, but saying, okay, so if we know that there's going to be, um, as an example, a different layout of different things coming up, then you can focus on that. Of course, if you took a four tile, you're benefiting yourself with that um, extra bonus of, of happiness, but or enjoyment factor. But if no one takes um, the tile with the black mask on it, you're going to run the risk that everybody ends up losing some reputation and it depends if they have full staff available to mitigate that so that's another thing to you know be conscious of but yeah and the black bags are nice quite a standard black bag i've seen it's a common uh selling item for game components i still don't know what some of these like square boxes are for if anything it's just like an extra spare thing and yeah like I said, interesting artwork. It's I like the way they've, you know, gone for the options of yeah, do you go for sets, do you go for dresses, and uh, I guess you could say everything in between. So the boards go like this, and you need to make sure that everything is inside. Um, spare counter, never a good thing. Cut that back in two, and then they're all back on top. So I don't think there's, um, I'm not aware of any expansions. Maybe there is one for this, actually. I think there's a, it's quite a rare one to get hold of, but I think it acts, adds some extra kind of acts or themes to it. But um, I've yet to see it. So I think, unless you're going to start playing this game a bit, you're probably not going to think about whether or not uh, an expansion or the extras is for you. So time for the weighing. Calaxy Ticket to Ride style box and the weighing is going to come in at, let's have a look, something's going to fall out now, 1073. So thanks very much, if you like the video please hit the like button if you haven't already and if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so for a new games coming and finally if you have any comments do please chuck them in the comments box in youtube thanks very much for watching see you again soon take care